All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores and the official Washington Commander 2022 regular season 53-man roster is officially out. We're first going to look at all of the cuts that happened, and then we're going to take a look at the exact 53-man roster, go position group by position group, player by player. We're going to talk about some of the snubs, some of the surprise cuts, some of the guys that were very surprised they made it. Of course, we're going to break down exactly why certain guys did and didn't make the team, but the nose but the most notable thing, probably the thing we can be the most optimistic about, is that Chase Young is the only projected starter that did not make the 53-man roster. All of the tight ends made it. Brian Robinson made it. So it sounds like he should be ready before week four. Because if not, you would have just put him on the NFI and saved that roster spot for one of the other guys that we're going to talk about that a lot of people felt like he should have made it and was very close to making it. I've heard reports that Jared Patterson is one of the guys that the team really hopes clears waivers so that they can bring him back on the practice squad. But either way, great news for the most part. Of course, we're sad about certain cuts. Again, we're going to talk about all of those, especially specific players that are surprise cuts. But man, it's really good to see that we have a full tight end room we have a full running back room apparently and of course we got to dive into how many of each position we kept and also i'm gonna try to compare some of the mistakes i made with my 53 man roster projection to see what i did wrong now i don't think anybody had a perfect final 53 man roster projection because the Dijon Harris one probably caught a lot of people off guard I'm not sure if anybody guessed that one plus we may be looking for some free agents and maybe everybody that made this 53 man roster may not be safe they have to wait till tomorrow to get their practice squad going and who knows who may end up clearing waivers and not clearing waivers maybe we claim somebody on waivers and things like that so this roster is definitely due to change before we even get to this jaguars game week one in less than two weeks but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one um, let me know how y'all are feeling about the cam at the bottom left too because I know some types of videos I want the screen to mostly be taken up by what we're talking about like right now We're gonna dive into the 53 man roster. I feel like y'all should be able to look at it as I'm talking about it So let me know if y'all prefer for me to have my camera on the screen or not And of course make sure y'all pull up every Friday for the Friday stream and every Sunday for the calling show Post game after every game that I live stream during the games as well and without further ado, let's get it All right, let's start with the cuts. There were 25 players waived or cut. You have tackle Alex Akambulu, defensive tackle David Bada, who's part of the International Pathway Program, and apparently that roster spot does actually finally count as a spot that's being taken up once we get to the 53-man. But the 90, the 85, and the 80, we were able to keep one extra because of him, but now he's gone. Tight end Kendall Blanton, who we brought over from the Rams, probably will get picked up by another team running back reggie bonifon may end up on the practice squad if we want him back defensive end william bradley king i've heard reports that other teams are interested so he probably won't even make it to our practice squad but if he survives waivers we'll definitely bring him back defensive tackle tyler clark wide receiver matt cole cornerback corn elder one of the surprise cuts man and it's just simply he wasn't good enough in the preseason it's kind of weird though to go from being one injury away from starting for our defense to cut is pretty crazy but between him and danny johnson the way they played in the preseason i'm not necessarily surprised then you have wide receiver alex erickson once they decided that dax Milne was going to be our primary punt returner he had no spot on the team farad gartner the safety my boy from atlanta they're definitely interested in bringing him back on the practice squad if they can he's a developmental hybrid linebacker safety type and if he doesn't get claimed by another team which i doubt will happen he'll more than likely just end up on our practice squad defensive tackle justin hamilton tight end jake Hossman, who we brought in to basically just be a camp body because we ran out of tight ends remember at some point we had nathan gary at linebacker running tight end for us in practice we just didn't have any left linebacker could league hudson now that was a big surprise cut but at the same time it kind of wasn't because like i talked about in my final 53 man roster projection i've said that Khalid hudson has not looked good 
these past two years he looked better his rookie season than he's looked since then now granted he may have gotten a little bit better mentally and learning the nfl game and being able to process things quicker but i don't know if he's just physically not the same as what he was for some reason i don't know what's going on but he literally looked worse this preseason than i remembered him even looking as a rookie i mean he was just always too many steps behind even against slow people like a fullback for the ravens a backup fullback that more more than likely isn't even making the team then cornerback danny johnson another top five surprise cut right there for sure i mean granted he looked bad in this preseason and like i said in my 53 man roster projection video i said that if he makes this team it's because first of all he's a reserve special teams returner guy if need be like the super backup 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 returner and also he's probably riding the wave off of the success that he had on that four game win streak last season he was actually pretty good in that four game win streak and you could honestly say maybe even really good at times in that four game win streak last year but since then i don't know what's happened I, I haven't heard him flash in training camp much i've heard josh drayden has outplayed him in training camp and then he had the nerve to go out there and look that bad in preseason i'm not surprised he's cut after that but entering this offseason before training camp here and danny johnson got cut would have been a huge shock but again at this point where we stand after seeing what we saw in the preseason i'm not surprised then guard nolan loffenberg not surprised there then you have guard wes martin who was taking some snaps at center in some of the practices since we picked them up off of waivers but ultimately he didn't make the team but i did see a report that they will bring him back for the practice squad if he clears waivers which is quite likely and then you have wide receiver Kyrick mcgowan who we brought here to potentially compete as a returner maybe makes it to the practice squad along with mark and michelle you know he's sony you know he's my georgia dog sony michelle's brother and even just beyond that bias that i have for him right there and why i really wanted him to make the roster some way somehow even though I already knew it wasn't going to be possible i also just feel like he's a playmaker whether it was carson wentz taylor heineke or sam howe throwing him the ball in practices he always found a way to make a touchdown play i don't know how he was doing it it was just oh if he beat benjamin st juice for a touchdown one play it didn't matter who was covering him and then you also have tackle Aaron Montero. I'm a little surprised by this just off of the fact that he's really mostly a tackle. We had him starting at right guard against the Chiefs offensive line against the Chiefs when it was starters versus starters in that preseason game because we had so many injuries to the offensive line. But still, he held his own at right guard even though he's naturally a tackle. And so I just felt like that type of depth and that type of positional flex was definitely worthy of a roster spot. But I'm not necessarily super surprised that he got cut. I just felt like it would make sense to keep a guy like that to have to help with your depth then cornerback dewan neal that's probably the least surprising cut along with center john toth who's a few names down then you have defensive end jacob on safety stephen parker i was really rooting for him really really was especially when he looked like lewis seen from my georgia bulldogs out there in that panthers preseason game but since then he hasn't really shined much and there's just like really no excuse against the ravens backup 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 second stringers at best third stringers fourth stringers guys that had no chance of making the roster uh, going against those people Stephen parker still didn't really shine that much so i'm not surprised after that game that he didn't end up making the roster but if you would have told me after that ravens game that he wasn't making the roster i may have been a little surprised and then running back jared patterson top five surprise probably number one to a lot of people because with danny johnson and corn elder and Khalid hudson at least they got cut because they performed poorly jared patterson out of this whole list of cuts was easily the best player out there in the preseason maybe you can argue alex erickson made some good plays again aaron montero looked pretty good at times stephen parker looked really good in that panthers game but i feel like jared patterson easily was the best player out of all of these 25 players that got cut easily especially in those last two preseason games you can honestly say he may be he may have even outperformed jonathan williams in those games even though jonathan williams was good as well but first of all jonathan williams didn't play in that ravens game but also they've already they already showed that they liked Jonathan Williams more than Jared Patterson. He was getting the reps. He was getting the higher reps in practices. He was higher than Jared Patterson on the original depth chart that came out before the preseason started. And so it was obvious to me 
that they were going to pick Jonathan Williams over him. The only question was, were they going to keep Jonathan Williams and Jared Patterson, especially if Brian Robinson didn't make the 53-man roster. But once I saw that Brian Robinson made the 53-man roster, I already knew Jared Patterson was not making the roster. And then, of course, center John Toth, him and Dewan Neal were the two least surprising cuts. And then linebacker Trey Walker, not very surprised about him as well. But then the Washington Commanders also placed three players on the injured reserve list. That's tackle Willie Bevers, cornerback josh drayden who again i kept hearing was out playing danny johnson in training camp practices and then center keith ishmael who's technically like our third or fourth string center in a way but i feel like if he was no injured reserve he probably would have gotten released and then they probably would have just brought him back on the practice squad anyway but now that he's on injured reserve nobody else can get him from us so well, I guess we'll see them next year. And now for the fun part, the official 53-man roster. We have three quarterbacks. Carson Wentz, Taylor Heineke, Sam Howell. That was probably the most obvious of any position group. We literally have only had three quarterbacks on roster since we let Cole Kelly go sometime like before or right after that saturday night practice at fedex field i believe it may have been like right afterwards either way it's been weeks that we've only had three quarterbacks that was the most obvious position group even though there are other even though there are other fairly obvious position groups that was by far the easiest to project then running backs four i had us taking three but with the brian robinson situation i can understand why they may have wanted to keep jonathan williams in addition in addition, just in case, especially if Brian Robinson is not ready to go week one. Since he's not on the NFI, that means he will not have to miss a mandatory four games. But that does not necessarily mean that Brian Robinson is going to be out there running the ball against the Jaguars. So that's why you probably have Jonathan Williams. Brian Robinson may be an active week one. Jonathan Williams is your running back right behind Antonio Gibson as far as carries. And J.D. McKissick is going to do J.D. McKissick things. And I think we'd be just fine. And then six wide receivers. I knew they were going to keep keep six and I knew they were going to keep this exact six people were coming at Deami Brown's head I kept telling people even though he may not deserve to make the roster he's going to make the roster he's a third round pick from just last year and has even shown a couple of flashes but overall he is easily the worst receiver on this team right now out of this 53 man roster Dax Milne Cam Sims all of these guys should definitely be higher than him on the depth chart and at this point honestly Deami Brown would be the guy that's inactive you know how you can only have a certain amount of players active you have a 53 man roster but not all of those guys can be active every game and so if i'm going against the jaguars or really against anybody until i see something out of deami brown not gonna lie i'm keeping cam sims and dax milne activated over keeping him if we can only keep what five if we can only keep five wide receivers active it's got to be deami brown and then tight end logan and then five tight ends i thought we would only keep four but i'm very happy about five y'all know me i wanted as many tight ends as possible and this is probably outside of the brian robinson news that he made the 53 man roster because that's obviously the most encouraging and great news out of everything that we got from this 53 man roster reveal but this tight end group for me is easily second and then there's a huge gap and then everything else that we could take as far as positives from this 53 man roster this tight end group first of all we kept more than i thought i thought we would only keep four and then my boy armani rogers made the team i told y'all he was gonna make i told y'all when we first picked them up the day immediately after the seventh round of the nfl draft i kept telling y'all and i'm telling y'all now i'm still telling y'all he has darren waller potential i'm not saying he will become darren waller but i'm telling you the fact that he's that good the fact that he already made the team the fact that he's out here separating against starting nfl corners like xavier woods from the panthers and he's only been playing the tight end position for two months in his life he was a quarterback his entire life until just a couple of months ago at the east west rombo and the fact that he already looks like that and is improving as an block and is improving as a blocker huge and then of course the other and then of course the other positive news that i really like curtis hodges a lot as well if i had to choose between the two it would hurt my heart but i would have to pick armani rogers but now i don't have to choose we kept both and then even on top of that not only did we keep armani 
we kept Armani Rogers, Curtis Hodges, along with the other three tight ends, John Bates, Cole Turner, and Logan Thomas. None of them start on the pub list. None of them go to IR. Nothing. They're all ready to go. Now, who knows? When we play the Jaguars, maybe if we keep a tight end inactive, maybe it's Curtis Hodges, maybe it's Armani Rogers. Either way, I'm happy. Both of them made the 53 man roster. That's good enough for me. I want to see them on the field, especially Armani Rogers, but we'll see. Just depends on how. It just depends on how healthy certain guys are. Like, if Cole Turner is healthier than John Bates and can play more, I can see Curtis Hodges going out there and, and getting more snaps under Armani Rodgers because Cole Turner is more of a receiving tight end. So is Armani Rodgers. If you have more Cole Turner, you don't need Armani Rodgers as much. Same thing with John Bates. Even though Curtis Hodges is not a great blocker, he's a better blocker than an Armani Rodgers at this point. And then, I mean, of course, he's 6'8". But so, if John Bates is healthy, but Cole Turner is still a little beat up, I'm expecting to see more Armani Monty Rogers out there because John Bates isn't necessarily a receiving tight end but he can catch and he will get some yards at the catch and then again the best part about the tight end room I love Armani Rogers and Curtis Hodges but at the end of the day the fact that Logan Thomas John Bates and Cole Turner all made the initial 53 man roster without going on the pup list that is excellent news this tight end group again outside of Brian Robinson is the best news of the whole day Offense alignment, we kept nine. Your obvious starters going from left to right. Left to right, Charles Leno, Andrew Norwell, Chase Roulier, Trey Turner, Samuel Cosme. Great news. All of those guys are healthy enough to make the 53-man roster. No pup list, no IRs, no nothing. Then behind them, you have Sadiq Charles, tackle and guard depth. More so guard in my opinion, but he's also been taking snaps at center in practice with all of the injuries that we had. Cornelius Lucas is your backup swing tackle. Chris Paul loved the fact that he made it. He's one of those guys that's only been getting better every every day every preseason game you saw him getting better so his potential is limitless because if we're talking about pure athleticism he's one of the most athletic offense alignment on this team it's probably between him and Samuel Cosme as far as athleticism goes the top two most athletic offense alignment on this team Sadiq Charles may have an argument in there maybe a couple of the other guys may have something to say but to me I think Samuel Cosme and Chris Paul are our most athletic offense alignment and then if you can groom Chris Paul to become to take the place of Trey Turner eventually or maybe even Andrew Norwell but preferably Trey Turner so that we can have like the most athletic right side of the offense right side offensive line in the NFL that sounds amazing and again the best thing you can hear about a player is that he's constantly getting better I love the fact that I'm hearing that about Malik Willis I love the fact that we used to hear that about Cameron Curl and now look at him back when people didn't even think he was as good as he would end up being all of that type of stuff there's certain things you got to hear when coaches talk about a player that you can really take from it and somebody getting better every day is huge and then also Wes Schweitzer of course the best backup guard the best backup interior offense alignment in the NFL in my opinion point blank period and the fact that he's healthy enough to make a 53 man roster is huge because if we have an injury at center or either of the guard spots he can step in and start right away and honestly I wouldn't even mind Wes Schweitzer being the full-blown starter but ideally he's your backup because he can step in at multiple positions and start whereas those other guys Trey Turner is not playing center Andrew Norwell is not playing center and Chase Roulier is not playing guard then going to the defense defensive line wise we kept nine that's including interior defensive linemen and edge rushers Montez Sweat Jonathan Allen Deron Payne and James Smith Williams are technically your starters with Chase Young out but of course for Darian Mathis is a technically another starter when we get into the five defensive linemen alignments he's your nose tackle at that point but he's going to be a heavy rotation even when we only have four defensive linemen out there then also you have Casey Tuhill as the backup to James Smith Williams you have Shaka Tony I'm super excited about him F.A. Abada and then Daniel Wise on the inside but on the outside F.A. Abada and Shaka Tony I'm not gonna lie I like both of them more than I like Casey Tuhill and it's mostly because of potential but also just this preseason I feel like they outplayed K K Casey Tuhill already but if we're looking at potential and in ceiling Shaka Tony and F.A. Obata blow Casey Tuhill out the water they really outmatch even James Smith Williams when it comes to ceiling and potential just from their athleticism and their specific skill set especially Shaka Tony he's the best pure pass rusher on this team I love Jonathan Allen I love Montez Sweat. I love Chase Young but they don't have the bend and explosion and burst off the edge like he does they just don't 
He's the only player on our entire team that has like a Von Miller like play style. I'm never saying he's ever going to be Von Miller, but he's the only guy on this team that even has that sort of speed and quickness and burst and bend off the edge. So again, I'm gonna keep saying it. I feel like to get him on the field more, he should be a Sam linebacker. I feel like he can handle coverage responsibilities very well. He's extremely athletic, very explosive anyway. And then as a pass rush specialist, he's special. And I like the fact that they chose to go with potential in Shaka Tony over the consistency, over the consistency of a William Bradley King. Y'all know I'm big on potential. You pay these coaches millions of dollars to get the potential out of these guys. So, I, I mean, once you find a pass rusher like Shaka Tony that flashes the way he does your only job is to get him to do it more consistently whereas William Bradley King you're never gonna get the highs that you get out of a Shaka Tony from him so now just teach Shaka Tony to be more consistent that's easier to do than teach William Bradley King to do something that he's never done before and then linebacker wise we kept five I'm surprised by that now the five we kept I'm also surprised about a little bit but just in general the fact that we kept five after Ron Rivera kept saying that we're probably going to keep less and we're probably going to dive into the waiver wire for an additional linebacker from free agency wherever claim one off waivers something so i'm surprised that we kept five for that reason now maybe milo eifler or dejon harris are not safe when we get one of those linebackers maybe they're one of the first to go if i had to pick between the two i'm pretty sure dejon harris would go before milo eifler like way before because like i said in my video earlier today milo eifler was our third best linebacker this preseason better than david mayo definitely better than Khalid hudson and i feel like easily better than dejon harris who also made the team over at Khalid hudson of course jamin davis and cole holcomb looked really good especially jamin davis i'm really excited about jamin davis and how he's going to impact this defense but that's very encouraging to see that milo eifler made the team shouts out to both of those guys dejon harris and milo and Milo Eifler, I saw them both tweet out how happy they were with the prayer emoji hands and things like that. Hopefully, after all of that, they're actually for real on the team and not just taking up a spot until they find a better linebacker and free agency, like I already said. But we'll see. Then cornerback wise, we kept four. Kendall Fuller, William Jackson, Benjamin St. Juice, and Christian Holmes. That's definitely going to change. That's literally like, there's no way that's how that's going to stay really even beyond 48 hours. There's just no way. They're going to find a corner. Now, granted, maybe they were in on the trade to get, uh, to get the corner from the Saints that the Eagles traded for that just made their defense even more elite than it already was. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. And what's with the Saints and Eagles doing so much business together, man? Like the trading of the draft picks last year, earlier this year, and they, they've been a little too friendly for me. They seem like they're both helping each other a little too much. I'm feeling a little bit of cheating going on. But back to my point, I feel like maybe the commanders were trying to trade for Chauncey Gardner Johnson, and then the Eagles came in and came in, made the move, got better. And now we're scrambling, trying to find some more cornerback options. But I just think it's funny that even if we were on that, or even if we weren't, at the end of the day, they were like, either way, we're not going back to Corn Elder or Danny Johnson. We'll just have to find something. We'll have to figure something out, which is crazy because if there's one injury to the cornerback group right now, second seventh round pick rookie that struggled in preseason against backups is immediately your starting corner. And with him being the fourth corner currently, he's probably going to play in games anyway. Even without starting, he's just going to be part of the rotation. Corners don't usually play every snap like Cole Holcomb does. So Christian Holmes is going to play on Sundays unless we go and find some corners out there that are better than him. But it's even scarier that just one injury away with William Jackson, he's been beat up. Kendall Fuller's had his fair share of injuries. Benjamin St. Juice missed most of last year with a concussion situation. So we're literally just one injury away from a fairly injury prone cornerback group to Christian Holmes, not only playing, but starting. And then the safety group, Cameron Curl, Bobby McCain, Percy Butler, Derek Forrest, and Jeremy Reeves. I felt like that was fairly obvious. Jeremy Reeves balled out in the preseason, so I'm not surprised there at all. And then everything else was just extremely obvious. Derek Forrest is your leading Buffalo nickel candidate. Percy Butler, even though he doesn't look as ready as I'd hoped he'd look, he's flashed a lot. And you can argue he flashed more than Derek Forrest, but Derek Forrest has definitely been more consistent. So we'll see how that works out as far as playing time goes. But the safety group was probably one of the easiest to guess as well. I was hoping they would keep six, but they only kept five. And then special teams wise, 
very obvious i mean by default this is the most obvious joey slides your kicker trust weighs your punter and cameron cheeseman's your long snapper and that's it but yeah man that's the end of this video i'm working on a video where i'm looking at all of the guys that got cut recently and some free agents that were even available before cuts happened that we may want to look at at linebacker cornerback especially maybe running back offensive line depth defensive line depth we're gonna take a look at all of the most notable players that got cut so make sure y'all stay tuned for that video coming out probably later on this evening or tonight we'll see but man of course definitely get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video do you agree or disagree with a lot of the moves that the washington commanders made are you happy with the decisions are you upset i know most people are really upset about the jared patterson thing especially since he's y'all boy he's from the dmv so i feel y'all on that one it hurt my heart when farad gardner got cut and he was nowhere near as good as jared patterson so i feel y'all and of course man please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything as always i appreciate all of the support man shout out to all of my sponsors especially my provo sponsors you name you see scrolling on the screen right now catch y'all later i'm out